lost of an abandoned schoolhouse. Kids left sidewalk hopscotch, building blocks, snack wraps, and tarnished books. Bells don't rumble my belly anymore. Kids don't fill my stomach of a building. I'm lonely. I'm hungry for the hums of teachers. Tired wise eyes beckoning brown children to try to read instead of rob, to write instead of grind, and to count instead of doing time. But California cut my time, like the redwoods, or the red men, or the black man, or the yellow man, or any human being brown, all invaded by conquest. Unless money flourishes your pockets like seven seas, then education is passed down like a golden locket. See, but I am an empty schoolhouse, thirsting for education, for children to slide through my halls, wet rain boots, wild hair, sticky fingers, snotty nose. I wanted all their lips thirsting for education. It was better loud. But loudness from a thickness of brown smiles always seems too loud. You explode through expression when you've been silenced. The government took away the children's pens to write this. There are books to understand this. There are schools to communicate this. And I've been made a budget cut, thirsting for education. Graffiti artists appreciate my abandoned body, but they are punished by police for their loving strokes. Maybe if the government funded education, then they could have been enrolled in an art class and used my body for a mural. And I remember when education was resilient, how abandoned houses, churches, and single rooms were once used at the cost of death to educate brown children. Maybe, just maybe, I can be resurrected by revolutionary love to educate warriors to rebuild my riches. All right, so the next poem I'm gonna do, I do a lot of political stuff, so the next thing I'm gonna do is like a love poem. Give it up if you like love poems. All right. So this is called, What You Must Know Before You Love Me. I have held my heart out like fruit on the platter of my hands to nourish the famine in the wretched chest and wet the heart of a heart abused and I am no victim of love. For I have stolen beats beneath the kind chest and greedily gobble God's generosity like grapes and spat out the seeds of the human heart. And here I stand with hands of betrayal and blessings and a heart furnished in disappointment. And I want you to love me. For I am the gatekeeper to the magic of your universe, the temptress and the high priestess, I possess the zest and seal to heal you into heaven. I have sat in silence, suckled anger like a snake in my throat. I curl revenge on my tongue, gritted hate in my teeth. I have cursed love for blushes and bruises. And I have learned to breathe through it and transfer my fury into indigo by using the wind to whisper. I'm gonna try out something with you guys. When I say survive, you say I live. Survive. Whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta try again. When I say survive, you say I live. So survive. I live. Survive. I live. Okay, okay, okay. I think I can do this. Every day, every day, how you live, pain. Do you say? Do you say something kind? Or are you cruel? Are you mean? Do you forget your blessings? Where does your heart lie in the city? A survivor is sure something fine. The closest thing to the physical form of a miracle. A survivor's 
sorrow lays face like lilies, medals of memory. A survivor is sure something pretty. Struggles shining in gold. Just about everyone wants to taste the survivor's strength. For no ordinary person can imitate the strut and stance of a survivor's grace. A survivor has seen the footsteps of God walking next to them. A survivor has tasted determination and depression together tangled in a swirl of sweet and sour. A survivor has sat at the cloud's tower and heard the wind whisper life's oracle and meaning. A survivor is sure something holy. No ordinary person could speak like a survivor. For divinity has dived like waves and washed the survivor's speech and tone pure. It sounds juicy like plums and music, a mystic sound when a survivor speaks and lets go and allows what they know about overcoming to flow. For survivor words are like antidotes, ancient healing hands. Survivor syllables massage the tension in the dreary air, drives the wound of fear into a scab and resurrects hope and growth. For a survivor's story can be someone's savings prayer. So everyone here, please speak and share, for we all have survived, and that is a miracle. Woo! <laughs> All right, so I got one more poem for you. If I were ever to go on a radio, this would be my commercial one. You know, you gotta always have a commercial poem. Uh, but I do have books for sale. They're ten dollars. I designed it, made it myself. Yay, yeah, give it up some noise for that. If you want to get both of them, two for 15. A deal, a deal. People like deals. <laughs> and also, as Sharon had mentioned before, I host the open mic, which is happening actually tomorrow at the new YMCA Teen Center on Shattuck and Martin Luther King and Center. And it's from 7.30 to 9.30. So if you guys want to come and get on the mic and have fun with me, everyone's welcome. All right. So this is called Because I'm a Poet. Because I am a poet. I'm like gravity. There's no escaping me. See, I'm thick like gravy, so contemplating me be pretty and pleasing. Forgive me. For sliding so smoothly like slippers, I slip in your mind, so slide. See, I was given rhyme to write the wrongs. I write awakening songs. My poems, they're songs. In my pen, that's my weapon. I create the anthem. I'm a warrior goddess with a gift of gabbing. Hella swag. <laughs> Understand this. It is my duty to document the truth. Trickery and traps trickle America, drench her in deceit, give her pearls of technology and greed and greed. It is my duty to plant my seed, seal it in word. There are so many words that mislead and brainwash the children. Success is a cough the kids catch like alphabets, an illness of attainment. When money becomes like air in lungs, when money becomes like air in lungs, oh, the things money has done in a capitalism corset. She has painted our world in blood, and we are heartless. Technology has replaced our hearts, and people run around like tin men and wonder why they are so empty, but do you know your purpose? Where do you stand at the hand of death can you claim your heart has walked its destiny? Because I am a poet, I contemplate all these things and write and write and write till eight creeps my brain with Grim Reaper cloak and I am brain dead and I cannot write anymore because holding a mic, it seems like my only free right. Thank you. Yeah.